Hello friends, today we are going to learn about the clavicle. The clavicle. So let us look at some of the peculiarities of the clavicle. It is the only long bone that lies horizontally in the body. It is subcutaneous throughout, which means it is situated under the skin and can be felt. It is the first bone to start ossifying. Now what is ossification? It refers to bone formation, which means clavicle is the first bone to be formed in the body. Now clavicle is the only long bone which has two primary centers of ossification. There is no presence of medullary cavity and it is occasionally pierced by the middle supraclavicular nerve. The clavicle is one of the bones of the upper limb. It is also called the beauty bone. It supports the shoulder so that the arm can swing clearly away from the trunk. The clavicle transmits the weight of the upper limb to the sternum. The part seen near the median plane of the body is called the medial side and the part away from the body is called the lateral side. Now, how do you determine the side of the clavicle? To determine its side, it basically has three important features. The lateral end is flat. Now, as you can see here, the lateral end is flat. And the medial end is large and quadrangular. Now, let's move to the shaft. The shaft is slightly curved and has a medial two-third and lateral one-third part. The medial two-third is anteriorly convex and the lateral one-third is anteriorly concave. Now we can see that the superior portion is smooth and the inferior portion has a groove which is called the subclavian groove. So this clavicle has the medial quadrangular part which faces the midline of the body and the lateral end which is flat which points away from the body. The upper surface is smooth and the inferior surface presents a subclavian groove which determines that this is a clavicle of the left side. Now let us look at the features of the clavicle. First, let's move to the shaft. The shaft is divisible into the lateral one-third and the medial two-thirds. The lateral one-third of the shaft is flattened from above downwards. It has two borders, the anterior border and the posterior border. The anterior border is concave forwards. The posterior border is convex backwards. This part of the bone has a superior surface and an inferior surface. The inferior surface presents a conoid tubercle that is right here and the trapezoid ridge. Now let's look at the medial two-thirds of the shaft. The medial two-thirds is rounded and is said to have four surfaces. The anterior surface anterior surface is convex anteriorly. The posterior surface is smooth. The superior surface is rough at its medial end. As you can see it is rough in its medial end. The inferior surface has a rough oval impression at its medial end and presents a subclavian groove. The nutrient foramen lies at the lateral end of the groove. Now let's talk about the lateral and medial ends of the clavicle. Now this diagram represents the posterior aspect of the body. Now the lateral or acromial end is flattened from above downwards. It bears a facet that articulates with the acromion process of the scapula and forms the acromioclavicular joint. Now for the medial end, 
we have come back to the previous diagram. The medial end or the sternal end is quadrangular and articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sterni to form the sternoclavicular joint. Now let us learn about the attachments of the muscles on the clavicle. This muscle you see here is the deltoid. It originates from the anterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle. This is the trapezius. It inserts into the posterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle. Now let's move to the medial two thirds of the clavicle. This is the clavicular head of the sternocleidomastoid. It originates from the half of the rough superior surface of the medial two thirds of the clavicle. This muscle is the pectoralis major. The clavicular head of the pectoralis major originates from the anterior surface of the medial two thirds of the clavicle. Now there are two more muscles called the sternohyoid and the subclavius which cannot be seen in this diagram. I will explain you all these muscles again in the specimen of the clavicle. Now let's learn the muscles that we had seen earlier in the diagram on the specimen of this left clavicle that is held in the anatomical position. Moving to the lateral one third, the anterior border gives origin to the deltoid, the posterior border gives insertion to the trapezius, now the medial two thirds. Half of the rough superior surface gives origin to the clavicular head of the sternocleidomastoid. Most of the anterior surface gives origin to the pectoralis major. The medial part of the posterior surface gives origin to the sternohyoid. Now the inferior surface has a subclavian groove as we had discussed earlier. It gives insertion to the subclavius muscle here. Now apart from the muscles there are three ligaments, two joint capsules and one fascia attached to the clavicle. The interclavicular ligament is attached to the medial end of the clavicle. The costoclavicular ligament is attached to the rough oval impression on the inferior surface of the medial end of the clavicle that is this rough impression right here gives attachment to the costoclavicular ligament. Now the conoid and trapezoid parts of the coracoclavicular ligament are attached to the conoid and trapezoid parts of the clavicle respectively. The conoid tubercle and the trapezoid ridge gives attachment to the conoid part and trapezoid part of the coracoclavicular ligament. Now moving to the joint capsules. The lateral end of the clavicle gives attachment to the acromioclavicular joint capsule, this part. The medial end gives attachment to the fibrous capsule of the sternoclavicular joint and articular disc superiorly around here. The margins of the subclavian groove gives attachment to the clavipectoral fascia. Hope you found this video helpful. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.